our times for 4.30 and it says to be there 15 minutes early and to meet them at the exit of the Living with the Land. So, we're headed there now. Are you tall enough to change the sign? Mm -hmm. You're so tall. Tall <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. That's the same Thank you. You're higher. <laughs> Today we took the behind the scenes tour, a tour at Epcot where you learn how Disney grows fruits and vegetables using hydroponics, which is no soil. This is a one hour walking and standing tour of the fish farm and the greenhouses throughout the ride of living with the land. And I'm gonna do a lot of voiceovers for this video because I didn't wanna interrupt the rest of the people on this tour. So we did book it ahead online and it was very easy to do through my experience Disney app. And we just showed up 15 minutes early, checked in at the desk near the exit of the Living with the Land, and we were all giving backstage lanyards. The first room that we toured was the Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, where we learned how Disney deals with pests on their plants. They use wind control on all the doors to keep out pests, cutting off leaves that are infected, and they only use chemicals, which is soft chemicals, as a last resort, such as soap or oils. They also use biological pest control. In this first room, we were able to get a close look at the minor flies and wasps and see firsthand how they affect the plants. We were also each given a headset so that we could hear the tour guide throughout the tour and headed right outside. And we're also trying to hurry roof development along by providing red wavelengths of light. That's really good for roots and uh, a rooting foam as well. So inside of the jars, there's a gel at the base that provides all of the hydration nutrition that the plant needs while it fits inside of the jar. And then the rooting foam that we add in, again, just helps to um, increase the, the rate of the process um, is being demonstrated on the TV. So basically right now, Mark, those are his hands. He's harvesting little pieces of that jar. On the other side of the laboratory, we are testing a Jordan plum tree for NASA. Disney doesn't partner directly with NASA. It's like one degree of separation. So we're working with the USDA and the USDA is working with NASA. And NASA showed up one day and brought us a growth chamber and we're testing a Jordan plum tree. Um, Inside the growth chamber, we can change different parameters like light, CO2, humidity. Once in the greenhouse, we learned that sand here is the same sand as, as it was very first planted in 1982. So before I was born, <laughs> one year before I was born, we were asked not to touch the plants as it needs to stay food safe with the exception of Stanley. Stanley is the name of the sensitive plant. Each person in the tour was able to touch the plant and see its leaves close up. And then she said it takes about 10 minutes for the leaves to open back up. Once we were home from the tour, our daughter actually noticed that we have a large area very close to our house with sensitive plants. So that was very neat. In the first greenhouse, we saw how the aeroponic system works to grow plants without soil. The plant's roots are sprayed with a nutrient-rich solution that promotes rapid growth and more produce. I took a picture of the sign that includes all the nutrients that go into the water for each plant, which is very interesting. Restaurants that use the produce from the Living with the Land include Garden Grill, Sunshine Seasons, Coral Reef, Gico. We were able to taste some cucumbers that were grown in this greenhouse that were seedless cucumbers, also known as burpless cucumbers. So we learned that if a cucumber has large seeds, it makes some people burp. 
So they were able to grow some cucumbers here that were either seedless or have small seeds and they're birdless. And we also learned that Disney chills the water that is used for their plants. And that is how they are able to grow lettuce in such hot weather here in Florida. So for the lettuce in order to grow, they keep the water under 60 degrees. Does anybody have any guesses what this device is? All the different types of pest control that Disney uses for their greenhouses, there is one animal that they cannot stop from getting in. And that is what's making these little tiny footprints in the sands right there. Any guesses of what it is? Let me know in the comments down below because they are everywhere here in Florida. <laughs> Another interesting fact that we learned on this tour was that since there are no uh, insects inside here, all of the uh, pest control that they do is that they have to hand pollinate most, if not all, of these fruits and vegetables. And so the person who hand pollinates these winter melons get to actually name them. And so the one in the front we see is Seven, there's one that's named Jafar. So of course they all have Disney names. Next up, we went into the fish farm. The first animals that we saw were the shrimp. They were in these clear tubes that you go by on Living With The Land, and they have some hidden Mickeys and even a hidden Minnie Mouse in there. 
and they were just so cute, all the shrimp is going around in there. Then we were able to walk by the tilapia and even the sea bass they have that they do use in some of the restaurants at Disney. But my favorite part of this tour was when we were able to feed the fish. They gave each of us some pellets and then one, two, three, we all threw them in at the same time and the fish went crazy even though she said that was the third time they'd been fed that day. We were the last tour and they were so excited for these little fish pellets. Ice cream banana? So that's cotton? My dad would like that huh? sorghum.
80 beans to make one cup of coffee. Oh, there they are. Passion fruit. Big. All right, here's Stanley. Bye, Stanley. Bye, bye. Bye. Living with the land. Five minutes. So after doing that tour, we have to get on the ride now. So let's go have a different view of what we just saw. Well, that seat tour was really neat. Had lots of really um, information about different types of plants. It was really neat to see them up close, and especially I like seeing the the fish. Um, I think that's just really neat. We were able to feed them, which was really cool. The tilapia. So they gave us a paper on how to make the land hydroponic rice tank. So, I'll take a little screenshot of that here now. That is here. But, Have you ever had breadfruit? Me neither. Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the Java. U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative oh, ways is. to produce bountiful harvests now and Jasmine. into the future. Is a waterway. We were just All here. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. When we mention farming, you probably don't think of fish. But fish farming, or agriculture, accounts for nearly half of all the seafood consumed in the globe. Tilapia, bats, and catfish, like the ones you see here, are three of the more popular crops raised by fish farmers. The sustainable system we're using here, our small fish farm, produces nearly 5,000 pounds of fish each year to serve in restaurants around Walt Disney World. Innovations like this one can play an important role in our efforts to produce valuable harvests and still protect natural resources. While there are more than 50,000 edible plant species in the world, most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. 
Learning how to increase yields of bee stables is an important goal of research around the world. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests, like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year. There's two of them. There's one on Where? top of the rock right there, and there's one back there. The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Oh, I see it. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. And that'll do it for today. We had a great time behind the scenes greenhouse tour at Epcot with our whole family. We really enjoyed it and can't wait to do more tours here at Epcot. And I think there's a whole lot of tours at Animal Kingdom as well. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more upcoming videos. And now it's your family time. Bye.